Good morning and welcome to another episode of Love and Daily. I'm Julian Bonnici. Joining with me today is Jonathan Celia. Today's headlines are as follows. Robert, Robert Landowner explains why he doesn't want the public walking on, on his land. Morty's woman describes a nightmare after goes left inside body after C-section. Slima Wanderers announced new sponsor after weeks of internal troubles. A 15-year-old migrant who was denied entry to Malta recounts her horrific journey and the Israel vaccine study shows huge drop in symptomatic COVID-19 cases. John, on to our first story. Yeah, so obviously a few weeks back there was the Fomery gate debacle when a gate appeared overnight that was blocking public access to certain areas. Um, following that, you know, activists and environmentalists have started speaking out about access to natural green areas and a robot landowner has now spoken out explaining just why he doesn't want people like you and the public entering his fields um, and he was very unapologetic about it so Paul Atzapardi spoke to Lava Mota and he said you know before the coronavirus hit um, not that many people would pass by his fields maybe 50 people on a regular basis his fields are in Rabat's um, Blata Talmel area but since the coronavirus hit, he said, you know, hundreds of people are now turning up on the regular and they're causing a bit of environmental damage in his fields. Um, he showed us images of bushes being trampled on, um, prickly pear plants that had been broken down or crushed. He even spoke about a, a um, 50 blue rock thrushes, those are Merrill, um, that would nest nearby that have disappeared over the last few months. Um, so, you know, he's kind of giving the other side of things, um, you know, showing, listen, I want people to enjoy the environment. And he even spoke about how he created some common pathways so him and other landowners could walk and also the public could access. But seeing how much damage co came about once they visited, you know, maybe he is um, uh, having second thoughts. So obviously this comes after some black spray paint appeared in the area saying, you know, no trespassing, private property. We asked um, Paul if he was behind the spray paint. He said no, he was not, and he didn't know who was behind it, but he did say it came after wooden signs saying private property and the area had disappeared. Yeah, no, it's, um, you know, I've got a bit of mixed feelings about it, you know, because I do have actually so, so, so much sympathy, you know, for Mr. Party. He actually, you know, takes care of his land. Um, it is his land at the end of the day, and then just people come and destroy, you know, valuable parts of it. However, you know, I think there's this battle between, you know, obviously respecting um, private interests and the public's want to actually have, you know, public spaces. What I think a really big issue is, is that, you know, it's not the first time you're walking down a down a road in the countryside or by the coast and you see a big private Titholsch sign right right ahead of you and you're not actually sure whether somebody actually has ownership over this land. What would be really helpful is a proper register that's easily accessible so at least people can know where and where not um, they're sitting and making sure they're not infringing on anyone's rights. Um, on to our next story, quite, quite, quite a, a sad, um, tragic story really, you know, about how you know, one woman, you know, had a nightmare after having a C-section. You know, for most people, having children is a, is a beautiful moment. But for Yannicka Barbara, um, it was nothing short of a nightmare. The issue, the, the issue all kicked off on 25th January um, when Yannicka Barbara Sant was going in to have her, her first child you know, delivered by cesarean operation. Already quite a, quite a traumatic thing um, to go through. At the start, she, uh, anesthesia wasn't working, so she actually fainted with the pain and um, that was until normal anesthesia was applied but that's not where the, <laughs> the nightmare starts about two days later um, Yannicka Barbara Sant woke up with serious pain you know really really concerned went to a gynecologist to sort of dismiss her concerns until finally she went for a midwife to a second opinion and was rushed into the emergency room it turned out she had a seven centimeter gauze trapped inside her intestines effectively poisoning her, you know, it's really, 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 really horrible stuff. You know, thankfully, um, she, made, she made a recovery. The operation was successful, but still she's raising concerns about the neglect she might have suffered from really people who were handling her, her health um, and safety. Really, really sad stuff. The health ministry, for some reason, is refusing to comment on the issue. I don't know what to think about it. I mean, I can't imagine what it's like going in, you know, pregnant um, and leaving with gauze inside your body. Um, you know, the case, you know, 
medical mistakes is really do happen um, more often than you think and I think this case sheds light on that happening um, you know abroad this is a serious issue and and doctors can be sued for it um, whole hospitals can be taken for malpractice to courts um, so I, I'm not exactly sure if she intends to do something of the sort in Malta however you know expecting to have a baby is it as you said yourself it's supposed to be one of the most beautiful moments of your life um, she said you know at the end of it all she finally got to hold her son against her chest she cried with joy but she could barely hold him because she was in so much pain so a really shocking event to happen on what was supposed to be such a beautiful uh, event in your life moving on to the next story um, about one of the most respected football teams on the island slimmer wanderers so obviously the last few weeks and months have been a bit of um turmoil for the Slimmer Wonders, um, but they are opening a new chapter with a new sponsor um, coming on board. So Maltese accounting and advisory firm NM Group are now the sponsor of Slimmer Wonders, and as part of the sponsorship, um, the ground will actually be renamed NM Group Slimmer Wonders F FC Sports Complex. Um, Beppe Muscat, the CEO of NM Group, said, you know, quote, we're really excited about the new collaboration. 2021 is NM Group's 30th anniversary, and they've been working very hard at developing a clear vision for the company. And clearly, Slimmer Wonders is part of that vision. Um, just a quick reminder, if, if you weren't aware of what's happening with Slimmer Wonders, they've had a bit of a financial problems over the last few weeks, so much so that players actually took to the pitch last week in a protest um, speaking out speaking out about not being paid they spoke of some players who are living in Malta but come from abroad who could barely afford food and players had to pitch in to actually give them food um, so hopefully this is a bit of a, a, a good chapter for Slimmer Wonders yeah no it's really pretty positive news I guess for Slimmer Wonders but I think that the whole issue you know really raises the questions about the financing of Maltese football clubs you know too often we see big sponsors come in pledging big things signing pairs, players on on high wages but really the sustainability of that is thrown completely out of the window the MFA needs to do more um, at least due diligence on who is financing these clubs I mean we're talking about Catco and um, nobody really knows exactly what they do to this day and um, we I really hope the MFA should have done its research and let's hope that's the that's the sort of method mo moving forward. Um, on to our next story, um, a really, really sad story. You know, at 15, um, Tzedal witnessed slavery, rape, her father's death, an escape from a Li Libyan detention center, and the perilous journey from Africa to Europe. But for us, she's just a number of the many migrants who were blocked entry despite being in Malta. Search and rec Rescue Zone last April. Speaking to NPR, a US-based national public radio station, um, said that Sedal recounted her journey. It started from eight years old when she left from Eritrea with her father. Um, they eventually made it to settle in Sudan before having to flee again um, to Libya. Um, unfortunately, on that journey to Libya, her father died about eight days into the journey. Um, really callously, traffickers just chucked his body um, on the side of the road and moved Sedal onto traffickers, you know, where she faced um, sexual abuse, rape, um, quite, quite a, a, a myriad of horrific, uh, of horrific things. Eventually, uh, a Libyan doctor did manage to sort of save her, but eventually she had to flee again once gangs were, were re-invading um, her area. She described her journey to Malta, how she was on, on, a, on a raft that effectively stopped and how people started growing desperate, hallucinating, you know, becoming really, really desperate about, about this scenario. Unfortunately, they were blocked all entry into Malta because of the COVID-19 pandemic, even though they were in Malta's search and rescue zone. Um, eventually, they saw the AFM coming for and said that sort of describes how she was really happy seeing this boat. But little did she know it was returning her back to Libya, you know, where she suffered so much. The exact place she was trying to get away from, she was back at square one. No, the story is truly heartbreaking. And I do urge everyone to actually read the details um, on Love of Malta as well as NPR. Um, I think sometimes we forget about the real human tragedy that's happening right on our shores, right between Malta and Africa. So often we hear about migrants in numbers, as you said, um, and we forget that th these are women, children, little boys and little girls. Um, what's really horrifying is to hear that after all her effort, you know, after seeing her father die, making it to the, ocean, uh, to the Mediterranean Sea, she was still taken back to Libya. So it really is heartbreaking. What's interesting to know is that the story does not end there. Um, Tadal is a part of a group of migrants currently 
asking the Maltese Constitutional Court for a legal remedy, um, she and the migrants that she's a group, uh, she's forming a part of uh, the group of, are claiming that they suffered a breach of human rights when they were sent back to Libya. So this is definitely not the end of the story. Stay tuned to see how this develops um, moving forward. Um, ending on a very positive story, a new study coming out of Israel um, shows that you know taking two doses of the vaccine has a major, major impact on how you will be or you will not be contracting the COVID-19 virus. So um, uh, organization Clalet have org uh, underwent a massive study looking at 600,000 people who took two doses of the vaccine and compared them to 600,000 people who did not take the vaccine. And they found that the people who had taken the do doses of the vaccine reported a 94% drop um, in, in developing COVID-19 symptoms. Not just that, there's a 92% drop in uh, the likeliness to develop severe virus-related symptoms. So obviously, this is coming from Israel, um, a global leader when it comes to the inoculation drive against the global coronavirus pandemic. But I think, you know, during the study shows that these vaccines really do work. Yes, um, it's, it's, you know, it's a really, really positive story. You know, once you start seeing uh, vaccines take hold like that, right, it gives you some hope that, hey, we might be on our way mm -hmm. to returning back to some semblance of normality. And um, just so how much has concerned, we've done over 60, so over two, over, sorry, 16,200 people have received a second dose. And that's actually quite a large number relatively to our size. And Malta in general has given over 50,000 uh, doses. I think the story actually relates quite in a funny way to Malta's Prime Minister. So Prime Minister Robert Abela um, two days ago announced how, how his grandmother had contracted COVID-19 soon after taking the second um, vaccine dose. But thankfully, even though she's 91, has shown no symptoms. So it's probably on the on the road to a likely um, recovery. So really positive news. Let's hope um, there's more good news in the future on this. Just to give some um, little context to Malta's figures at the moment, yesterday there were 156 new cases, 184 recoveries and two deaths, putting the active number up to um, 2340. Um, there's a good for hope for a sign of the future. Um, that's it for us today. And remember, have a day full of loving.